So I'd like to talk a little bit about the early lessons in A Course in Miracles. Uh, one, of the f one of the first lessons are making everything meaningless. Making everything meaningless is to make things unimportant or to let go of the specialness that has been projected by the ego. So the Course says that uh, we're living in an illusory world, I would say a illusory world of fear and separation. Uh, and this is created by um, ego perception. And what is ego perception that creates this illusory world, as I see it, of fear and separation? Is The ego is, is just, if you like, a construct which has made various things important or various things meaningful or various things special. It's also made its own idea as an individuality special as well. So it sort of sees its own frame, like for example, the, the ego makes the body special, important, meaningful. So then it seems like one is the body, one is like tied into this little location in space. Then it's the ego, what else does it make special or important? Well, it makes its thoughts special or important. So then it seems like there is a thought field located in space and time that is separated from everything else. So it creates these. And how does it create all of these things? By giving them, by, by identifying or giving them meaning or specialness or importance in some way it then seems like these things are real and are a real separation disconnected from everything else. And as the thoughts, the memories, the beliefs, as these are taken on board, these become like a filter in which the perception of what the world is interpreted to be uh, goes through. So, you know, for me it's like um, the more thoughts and beliefs and the more body identification and the more images and the more memories and the more repressed and suppressed feelings that are that are stored within the ego, then it's like I sort of liken it to wearing dark sunglasses. One starts to feel very disconnected from the world, very much in separation, very alone, very, you know, it could be things like depression or guilt or shame or addictions are taking place and also the world is seen from a very separate point of view and the projections like God it's a depressing world everything's going bad there's no hope in the world what's the point so all of this is just the perception of just all these things that have been made important and special within the ego then create this very very dark outlook and it's like if if the truth is just oneness and light and love then the more there's these identification, these patterns like thoughts, images, body, all of these sensations, then the more the world goes into separation and darkness and there's this filtering or this perception of, of the world which seems like it's real. So that, that's then, I would I'd say the Course is calling that, that's the ego's perception of what it thinks it is and what it thinks the world is, which is different from vision, where there is no fear and separation. So some of the early lessons in A Course in Miracles, um, which are very, very good, you know, to practice regularly throughout the day, and even you can practice now if you wish to, is, um, is and I think one of the geniuses, as it says, is to look, for example, some of the early lessons are like, look around you and say, for example, look for one second at the table and, and say, it's meaningless, this table is meaningless then turn your gaze randomly and you see the chair. For one second, again an equal interval of time, the chair is meaningless. And then you see a person sitting down and you say, this person is meaningless. And then you look at the lamp, the light shade, and you say, this is meaningless for one second. So you're giving everything equally one second. And you're saying it's meaningless. So you're, you're making the affirmation to take away all the projections, all the importance, all the meaning, all the valuing 
uh, everything that's been associated with that to totally revoke it, you know, with the, with the help of the divinity. So you're doing that, and as you keep doing that, you know, you'll, have, you'll see that some things the ego thinks are more important and some things it sees are meaningless or unimportant. But by equally treating everything the same, then you're starting to release the importance or the meaning or the special projection that's been given to things. So you can have it, you know, some of the early lessons with the Course in Miracles are for big objects like chairs and tables and people and money and donuts and, you know, the TV, uh, George Clooney, they're all equally meaningless, you know. Like George Clooney has no more importance or specialness than a pillow, which has no more specialness or importance as the as the wooden floor, you see. So then it's like this filtering system that creates the ego and this distorted reality, dualistic perception, starts to be dismantled. But then one has to be willing to let go. Then later on the course goes on, well actually all my thoughts are equally meaningless, unimportant, not special. So then we're going more into the intimate layers you know, first we're going to the objects outside that seem to be real, like tables, chairs, George Clooney, donuts. All like they're all equally meaningless. They have, you know, we don't want the ego to be holding any kind of representation or perception or past association with any of these things. So we're deleting all of that so we can get into that which is the pure essence of now. So now we're going into the internal reality, like thoughts. Well. If I suddenly have a thought of, um, I hope we're having cake for dinner, you know, so that thought is equally as meaningless as, you know, uh, uh, the, the ceiling is beige colour. You know, like the ceiling is beige colour or yellow colour is like, that's a thought that won't stick because it's so boring and meaningless that the ego will not associate or put anything on it. So it just vanishes. Well, you know, if I, was, if I had liked George Clooney and made him special or meaningful or important, well, it, it shouldn't stay any as long as uh, a random thought of, you know, the ceiling is yellow or cream. So we're releasing that. So then all the thoughts, then the Course in Miracles talks about, you know, we're, we're going to that field uh, beyond form, beyond time. So even if time has been made important, then actually time should be made totally unimportant. And um, if any type of form, so what are the types of form? The types of form are, we've got like objects, external objects, chairs, tables, people, uh, the weather, these are external, but then there's the internal objects, thoughts, images, memories, sensations, awareness of the body, all of these internal subtle things, but these are all in the realm of form, so we want to make all of these things unimportant, meaningless. So then we're getting to the substrate, which is beyond form, beyond time, beyond any type of ego projection or specialness or meaning. So then what, what's left? So the other way of doing it is to do the observer. You see, the observer is the same thing as making, as you make things, when you're doing the course, when you make something, render it, you keep saying, like, George Clooney is as meaningless as a pillow, unimportant as a pillow, or a cushion, or a plant. Then eventually George Clooney becomes like the same as the chair. You know, there's no more, it's not more special. Like, I come from a background of addiction. When there's addiction, you know, like, I was addicted to food. So it's like, I would just have a strong attachment or be obsessed. Like, if, there was a, if there'd be a donut on the table, I'd be obsessed with that donut and only look at that thing. And I wouldn't, if there was a chair next to the donut, I wouldn't even give any time to the chair. You know, the chair is unimportant, but the donut, the donut, and... The more you give this energy, and the more special you make it, the bigger the attachment, the more the importance. You know, the harder it is to break it. It becomes like an addictive thing to, to break these things. So, 
So like I was saying, The Course in Miracles offers, I think, a genius method of going through all my thoughts are meaningless or unimportant, all the objects that are being perceived are meaningless. Um, it also tells you later on in The Course in Miracles, I'm not a body, I'm free, for I'm as God created. If you let go of your identification on the importance of the body, something more free and eternal is recognized beyond the body, beyond time. Now, the other way of doing this, which I quite like, which I learned from Uji, is to do, I, I, he calls it, self, you know, he, he's traditionally called self inquiry, I call it the observer, is to see, you know, what is being, you know, if there's anything special, what's observing what's special? So let's say there's a donut on the table, what's observing the donut? Is the observer of the donut, is that, uh, is that, is that, Giving, is the observer giving special importance to the donut? And if the observer is giving special importance to the donut, what's observing that observer? Does that observer that's observing the observer, which seems to be interested in a donut, does that have any interest in a donut? And then you'll start to find that eventually there is a, there, there is, um, there is a recognition of something which has no interest or special projection, or makes anything important. A place beyond time, beyond specialness, beyond projection, beyond duality, beyond separation. So as you keep doing this with anything that's special or important, then it's like the ego is being deleted. You know, these things which seem to have been so important and seem to be, almost have an addictive or obsessive relationship within the ego start to dissolve. So as you do this, you, you're releasing it. Now, for anyone who's listening to me now, um, these things can be done on all kinds of things. And also in very subtle things like tiredness, or you know, what's observing the tiredness, or if there's boredom, boredom's a subtle energy, what's observing the boredom? Or if there is a, a lack of focus, well, what's observing the lack of focus? If there is, uh, you know, or if there's fog, what's observing the fog? If, if, if there's a, a feeling of being frozen, well, what's observing that which is frozen? So, is there some kind of intellectual thinking going on? Well, what's observing the intellectual thinking? So you just, you just keep doing it. And as you go to that which is observing, if there's anything that still seems to be special or important or seems to have form, what's observing that? So take it back, you see, until, uh, until there's no more to take back. So one of the great things to realize with spiritual work is everything is surrendered, everything is released, because there's something, whenever something is recognized, there's a there is that which is observing or witnessing it from a greater field. Meaning like, if I observe the donut, I cannot be constricted to the donut. I am the observer of the donut. But if I'm aware of my body, I cannot be my body. What's observing the body? If, I, if there are thoughts, well, what's observing the thoughts which is not the thoughts? If there is a sense of like, let's say I feel very spacious in the room. Well, the room is like lo a location. What's observing the location of the spaciousness in the room? Because there has to be something greater, more expansive, than that which is even fairly expansive. Well, what's watching that which is expanded? Which is, what knows that something's expanded? So, again, take it even back further, until you cannot, until there's no more to take it back. So, with that, I'd, I'd like us all to practice doing this, and then I'll be getting feedback.